frame rail truck. It's got foreign stuff in there, frame rails and stuff. What's up, happy Monday. This is Kevin's Gen 1 Raptor. Cut. As with most of our vehicles and our projects, uh, they usually have some sort of a story or some kind of a premise. And I think that story or process or whatever is just as important as the build. This truck, um, I when I was at Ryan Kibbe's, uh, we, I did like, I was working full time over at another shop and then Ryan, I would come in and work weekends, um, like work a Saturday, work a Sunday. Uh, and this was my first, like, I, I guess you call it tryout, uh, uh, constructing the cage in this. Um, and that, that was my weekend thing. And then the, the guys, Ryan's guys, uh, worked on this more full time and kind of wrapped it up. And then they built the back half uh, and then they built some of the front. Um, and there was just, I don't know at what point or how the, the car ended up leaving Ryan's shop. And then Kevin contacted me years ago about uh, taking it on and finishing it. Um, there's been kind of different directions as far as what level we wanted to finish it to. Um, and now we're here and what we're doing is we're gonna finish this all the way to your typical like roller platform of all parts and components mounted. And then he'll take it and plumb it, wire it, disassemble it, coat everything, paint it, put it back together. Um, there's a quite a bit of extensive lacing going on under the chassis. Uh, and what I mean by that is from the the lower control arm cross members on the frame, there's gnarly tube lacing uh, going all the way through to the rear pivots for the four link. But right now, like I said, let's just cover the front. So things to consider with this car, um, we are still retaining factory front frame rail, uh, factory lower control arm mounts. Um, we will utilize custom upper arm pivots, um, factory engine, factory engine mounts, uh, factory transmission. So with that being said, these are um, the Raptor motors and like the modular motors and the five fours are all these big cumbersome wide motors. Um, there's a lot of packaging that goes into this stuff, making sure this motor comes in and out without building ourselves into a bird cage where it doesn't. Um, this is also a pro charged engine. Um, so, you know, there's a intercooler, air to air intercooler, um, the radiator, and then some miscellaneous components here. Uh, as far as the kit, this is, I think it's, so we got this and like, originally we were gonna do a custom kit for Kevin. Um, and it's just not the way the cookie crumbled, um, nor good or bad or right or wrong, but just the direction that this thing went. It's kind of, Kevin's had this thing for a while. And I think at this point, it's just a matter of wanting to get it done and have something he can go enjoy with his family and not taking too many steps back to where the progress and the upgrades just seem like a never ending cycle. Um, with that being said, we got this kit for it. Um, Kevin actually supplied it. Very similar, like at first I thought it was an H&M kit and I have a pretty good relationship with Kevin over there. Uh, and I like sent him pictures cause I needed some setup information as far as camber, caster, ride height, um, upper arm location and really I sent him that picture. He's like, that's not my kit. And I'm like, okay, all right. Well, we got to do this the, the original traditional way. And that is cycling. So, um, you know, we installed this whole thing and we just installed it with what is optimal. I didn't go off of guidelines of what this kit wants. I went off guidelines of what works best for this truck, where we want ride height, where we want our caster, um, where we want our camber, our initial camber setting at ride height. Um, and we built all the upper arm pivots from here. The, Chassis you see in here is like this big floating 
uh, com complex kind of chassis structure of tubes. And why I say it complex is it's just, when you run like a, a frame rail truck with a kit, it's different because the shocks, you're only running like, this is a 10 inch shock. So with that, like the shock is not something where it's a 14 or a 16, it's not going up high into the chassis. So you end up with like this mid board structure that's necessary. And your chassis tubes are always gonna come up kind of towards the wiper or the hood area. So tying this all in and triangulating it um, is always something that has to be done like this. see the packaging on this is very thought out um, we don't have the grill on right now we don't have the one piece but you can see there's there's a couple substructures there's our bumper um, this is very similar to what I was talking about with a mirror uh, and the bumpers we do where they're kind of a, a compound roll they're like a you know a center roll and then a tightened a miter correction to tighten the corners with another radius um, these tube caps follow all of the body um, we're kind of known for doing that where everything flows into the, the bumper. And then you can see there's a sub-assembly here. The sub-assembly harnesses the lights and then it also will harness the grill and that's kind of floating from the chassis. And then on top, this is our uh, hood support. So this is gonna be another flip up, um, goes towards the front, we can show you guys that. And then these are all landing pads and why I say these are landing pads is because these actually unbolt. Uh, and what this is for is this is so there's no fasteners. So what I mean by that is instead of having a fender washer or something through the hood fiberglass, this would get fiberglassed in on the backside or the underside of the glass. Uh, the glass would sit here and then you'd, you'd lay this thing up in the fiberglass and it would sit here and then you'd bolt it on. So it would actually have no exposed fasteners on the top. Anytime you're having to run like a, you know, a smaller, like a kit, like a long travel kit like this, uh, not like a center mount, but something that would retain your lower pivots and you would build upper, upper arm pivots. Uh, you always run into this problem because the shocks are never like a true big 16 inch shock or something that wants to be at the height of the, like the belt line, you know, or the hood line. So your chassis will always want to be up a little bit higher. And then you'll really run into this issue where you need to draw more structure um, down to where the shocks, the, the tops of the shocks need to be. And so that's what we have here is there's a lot of triangulation. Um, you can see the stuff that's coming through the firewall. We did all this firewall work. Um, this is all clearance for 40s. Uh, and then this tie-in goes to your upper arm pivot. It's heavily gusseted on the bottom. And then we have another tie-in tube. And then these start to triangulate, right? and they're all tied in. So the force of this thing moving around is not gonna be able to do this with the frame rails. That's the whole problem is, you know, you can usually secure the cars where if you're looking at this and this is the driver's side frame rail, that's your passenger. Sometimes you'll take big hits and they'll wanna blow up and bend the shit out of one area. So this triangulation, you can see, I'm gonna open this thing up, um, but you can see it's all tied in and it requires a lot more than say something that has like a center mount where you can kind of get a shock mount win on the top tier. Um, you have to have this, this lower board uh, structure. Um, and this is kind of a floating shock mount right here. We'll put some gusseting in here um, on the front and probably on the rear. And then this is just gonna hold just like it, it needs to. There's no other force that needs to be um, transferred around or landed anywhere else.
So this is very similar to uh, Amir's truck. This is similar, the T100. Uh, this is similar to Vivian's hood. This is similar to um, James's Frontier. It's the same kind of hinges. Um, there is no gas strut on this one either, so I kind of got to just rickety pull it up. Once it has everything braced and secure, it'll be a much smoother mechanism. And keep in mind, you know, the, the whole hood and the fender will go up with this thing. So same concept uh, as this guy over here. Um, and it's just, this is the, your perfect kind of service angle. Um, you can get a lot working with it like this, but it's doing the same thing. So right now it's you're figuring out packaging on this thing. Um, there's, you know, like typical stuff, just shooting off my hip here. There's reservoirs, uh, coil of reservoir, bypass reservoir, um, coolant tank, uh, oil catch. There's another catch tank that goes in here. There's our intercooler. There's our radiator. Um, the pro charger has all its plumbing, all the intercooler and the turbo piping. And then we also have the air filter mount in here. So I wanted to get you guys just like, we'll go over what we're doing right now and what we're going to be doing and just get up to speed a bit because we did start working on this. We worked on it quite a while ago um, and we were doing steady movement and some stuff happened where Kevin needed to take a break. Uh, and we're just focus on some other stuff. My commitment to him was uh, I will hold on to the car and when he is ready and he's in a spot where we can start going again, then we'll start going again. The, um, the error on my end, I don't know if it's an error, but at least a lesson or something that, that I needed to make right was I committed to work on it. Here's, we're gonna be able to start on X and we couldn't. And then we'll be able to start on Y and we couldn't. And Z and we couldn't. And it, you know, about three times of saying, hey, we're gonna be able to start on the truck. And we just were so just slammed that we couldn't get to it or stuff was taking longer on other cars. Um, and, and that stuff happens. But the bottom line is like, we're in a place now, we're here, um, where you're working on it nonstop till it's done. Um, where you're probably three weeks out from this thing being completed and where we want it and ready to go home for him. Um, so it's just important that like, that's the same thing I was saying, like is we just, we need to kind of focus on getting the stuff done that we talk about and also um, covering it with you guys and making sure that there's some kind of um, log of what we're doing. You know, we've had a couple slip through. Like I said, the expedition was a big one um, where Joey and I were just too busy and we couldn't get it. And, and that's an excuse on my end because I could have just sat there and shot it with the camera. Um, so we're here now with this. Uh, I'll go over some more. It's just like, this is in the bay. It is balls deep in fab work right now. That's why there's a lot of stuff that's tacked on um, and there's Clecos holding things, but I, I have no shame showing that stuff. And I'll kind of run through with you guys what we want to do on this thing next. a roached out 6.2 Raptor motor. Kevin's got a freshie. Um, this one's kind of served its purpose for mock-up. We'll transfer the charger off of it, or I guess Kevin will. Like I said, the, the real principle here with this thing is piggyback off the work that's been here. Um, do the best we can to package all this. Get him to a point where he can uh, take it apart, he can plumb it, he can wire it, and or have it plumbed and wired, and then, you know, coat it, put it together and enjoy it with his family. And it's at that point, like it's a, this trick's, it's got a great foundation. Um, it's just, it is a frame rail truck and it's kind of, you know, it's like your high level Raptor build. Uh, so it's awesome. It'll put down good power. But right now we're just figuring out routing. So we have mostly all of our components in here that we need. We have one more catch can and then we have a manual brake set put into the firewall. We'll run like a 19 inch pedal, which I don't know, you know, if you guys have questions about manual brakes on like street cars, um, it's a real 
thing about leverage. Um, you, you know, ABS and power brakes, usually a lot of people don't run like a hydro boost or anything. Um, you just run a manual brake, and the, the longer your pedal is, the more leverage you have and the easier it is to stop. And um, they're just kind of a proven system. I mean, obviously with like rain and stuff, it requires a little more cautionary action. Um, you know, sometimes you want to pump the brakes or just be more cautious, you know, your space when you're driving. But we'll run JMAR set up on here, um, reservoirs, master cylinders, pedal. And then what we'll start doing is really figuring out routing. So, you know, filter to procharger routing. Um, this guy will need to come from the intercooler or the intercooler will go into this guy and we'll try to find good symmetry in here. Um, symmetry that also makes sense. I think what we're going to end up with is the filter and the intercooler will, will come over to here and they'll be parallel and they'll, they'll kind of kick over. One will dive in, one will go back and dive into the pro charger. And what that does is if we kind of favor this area here, then we'll clear like the, the thing is you don't want to build yourself into not being able to change the belts. Um, it turns into a real big problem. You can't really do it from the bottom, especially if you have a skid plate, like a belt is not an uncommon issue for service. So I'd really stress just trying to build a way and not having like stuff passing through if you can, if you can pull that off, like with the frontier, it's gnarly cause it's such a tiny little compact package that stuff has to go through it and it's going to be a process or you got to remove a couple things to change the belt. Um, and it is what it is. But this is really like we're, we're just mounting accessories right now. And then we will um, do all of the, the cold side for the Pro Charger. Um, it already has headers on here. This is kind of just diving into the next steps. Uh, there's already long tube headers. We're gonna do all exhaust from header back. We'll be mounting the dash, steering, steering column, obviously the brake pedal. Uh, the seat and seat mounts are already done, so we'll kind of get into the cage area and cover that once we get to that portion. Uh, but right now, it's about finalizing the front of this thing all the way. Um, we are looking at doing a tin package, so that should be the icing on the cake for this thing, is having complete enclosure panels um, all on the exterior. So probably we cover through here and then cover all the sides. So things to think about for next time. Um, all, like I said, all this stuff is like tacked or root passed. Um, there is a valence we have for this thing. So typical stuff, right? Skid plates. Um, th I don't think this will be next time. Next time will be um, valence on all of this full front package, um, all of the hard line done for the intakes and for the pro charger, uh, everything welded, everything good to go. I think we'll be set on that and we'll probably be moving into exhaust work at that point. But I just, you know, it doesn't matter what we get in here. This is definitely kind of a different build for us, but it's still the same, same passion, same craftsmanship, same design. It's not really changing. Um, and it's also just kind of helping Kevin get his dream accomplished and finished and kind of close that chapter uh, for him and his life and let him have something that he enjoys. So uh, if you guys have questions or comments about this thing, feel free to message or comment below and have a good Monday.